Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have Scientific Snitch on TikTok. Never seen her before, ever. Our caption for this little video is industrial seed oils, artificial sweeteners, farmed fish. There's so much content here that needs to be corrected. Comment down below for part two. So none of these videos on TikTok have titles, so we're just gonna jump into whatever the video is. We I have no idea. Well, I do have an idea. I watched the first like 10 seconds or so. But before we jump right into this, please subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already. There's a $2 a month tier, a $5 a month tier, and an $8 a month tier in order to gain access to one week Weekly uploads, one extra video per week, ad-free content, and uncensored content. Also, buy my book, Contraindicated, linked below, out now if you haven't already. A closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. There is a paperback option, a hardcover option, and an ebook option, and soon there will be an audiobook option. I am currently in the process of recording and editing that myself. So, when that is out, I will let you guys know. And with that being said, now let's jump directly into the video. I see it like carcinogenic. Actually, we don't know if it's carcinogenic because the suffix genic means that it is causally linked to something. There are no studies to inform upon any cause and effect relationships as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been and there never will be. My opinion is that they most likely are. We do have other mechanistic data that shows what seed oils do. Sort of like, we can't say that A leads to C, but if A leads to B and B leads to C, you know, so. This has to break a world record. What? He said f***ing five words. Herbicides, inflammation in your gut, chemical agents, leaky gut, wreck the gut microbiome. How many corporate nutrition lies, buzzwords, and scare tactics can one person recite in a single sitting? I I'm sorry, what? Corporate nutrition lies? No, the corporate nutrition lies are the ones that promote seed oils by saying they're healthy, quote unquote. Heart healthy. Because they're the corporations that promote the oils. Like the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association. W what? Three part video. Hint, hint. After this, if you want to see more, comment down below. These seven foods create more inflammation. First buzzword inflammation. You'll. Yeah, you can call it a buzzword all you want. It's a real thing. Inflammation is a pre programmed response that occurs in the body when it has perceived damage to tissues or a potential invading pathogen. It's mediated by many cells, including dendritic cells, which are nerve cells, as dendrites are the tendinous ends where nerve cells join to other nerve cells, mast cells, which are important in collagen synthesis and other structural elements, epithelial cells, muscle cells, macrophages, etc., etc., and many other via PAMP and DAMP cell receptors. PAMP stands for Pathogen Associated Molecular Pattern, and DAMP stands for Damage Associated Molecular Pattern. I know quite a bit about inflammation, so tell us all about inflammation. This is a lot throughout the video, but inflammation is not inherently bad. In fact, inflammation can be healthy, helping you heal. Inflammation is a response by the body that is designed to heal it. Yes, in fact, my treatments that I undergo for my genetic disability, which is completely ameliorable, by the way, utilizes the inflammatory process within our bodies in order to rebuild the structures of my body, particularly my ligaments, specifically. The problem is that chronic, systemic inflammation causes a disease. Inflammation is supposed to surcease within the body after the stimulus or the stimuli for that inflammatory cascade is neutralized. Inflammation that is healthy is in response to seldom injuries or pathogenic contractions. It is not supposed to be chronic. Reason become stronger after exercise. More disease. Second buzzword, disease. What specific diseases? More disease than smoking cigarettes. Oh, so these seven foods will give you chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, bronchitis, lung cancer, stroke, heart attacks, and... That's not what he said. That's a straw man. He was talking about the amount of diseases that typically can and can be and are associated with seed oil consumption is the same amount that can be exhibited from smokers. More disease than smoking cigarettes. That's what he said. Which also is a cause and effect claim that he shouldn't have made. It's not true, per se. My opinion is that it's true. There's no evidence to support it, though, in the field of human nutrition science. <sighs> He did not say that they would cause those diseases, ma'am. So now you've lied. It's an emphysema more than smoking cigarettes. First one is going to be wheat and wheat protein. So yes, that is also contraindicated for human consumption. See, wheat has 70 to 80 percent of its protein content being constituted of gluten, which is a lectin because lectins are plant proteins. Lectins are plant proteins that utilize molecular mimicry on the domestic cells of the body to launch an immune response that directly causes many types of autoimmune disorders over time, if not very soon soon after the beginning of the consumption of them on a regular basis. They also tend to mimic hormones like WGA, wheat germ gluten, also found 
than wheat is a lectin that tends to mimic insulin by binding onto insulin and never really letting go either. So that enzyme will then have to be replaced, upregulating insulin's activity when it is not indicated to be doing such a thing. It also contains fiber. Fiber is indigestible. It is a contraindication of the human diet. It is abrasive to the enteric nervous system. It tends to ostensibly exacerbate constipation. It is completely unnecessary. Wheat contains oxalates as well. Well, it contains oxalic acid. Phytates as well, which inhibit nutrient absorption, particularly zinc and iron, but not zinc and iron found in meat. If you're a plant-based eater, therefore, though, phytates will be a very big problem for you. So anyway, what is she going to say about this? It includes fiber, minerals, and wheat proteins. So saying wheat and wheat proteins is like saying I like beef stew and beef stew with beef. It just doesn't make sense. Wheat has been high. What does it have to do with anything that he said? So are you going to tell us why he's saying that wheat is not indicated or salubrious at all? Dwarf wheat loaded with pesticides and herbicides. And That's also true. Glyphosate. In your gut, leaky gut. Holy moly, was wordioli. When someone word vomits like this, just tune them out. After doing two seconds. Okay, so if you can't actually argue the point, just tune them out. Good advice. Of course, you're on TikTok because that's the only platform that you can go on to beguile enough people into your ideology because they're that cognitively dissonant and also immature. Research hybridized dwarf wheat is not much different from ancient wheat. It just has marginally lower micronutrients, protein, and fiber. Pesticides and Okay, whatever. You're not actually attacking his point that they're inflammatory. Pesticides. And what specific herbicides and pesticides that are sprayed on wheat plants are harmful and at what dose in humans? And is Oh my god. Cyanide is a toxin, but if cyanide is in your food just to only a slight amount to the point where that dose will not actually induce damage, then it's totally benign and innocuous, and you should continue eating it. Does that make any f***ing sense? We're done here. I don't even need to address this argument, but I just did, using an analogy. Referring to both organic and non-organic pesticides and herbicides. Well, I have to say it has been shown to... So what? 99% of pesticides are produced by the plants themselves, so just another f***ing reason why we shouldn't be eating them, but... Heavy metals deeper inside of your tissues. What can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. But regardless, I'd love to see the human clinical trials he's referring to that found that the- Well, there's no such thing as any controlled trials because you cannot impose control over human beings to a complete degree. You can't do that. Okay, there are no randomized controlled trials. See this pyramid here? Is the hierarchy of evidence. Except for the fact that it's still not evidence because randomized controlled trials cannot inform upon cause and effect relationships and it is theology by definition. It is theory generating because you cannot impose complete control over human beings. We are done. You refer to biochemistry, you refer to cellular biology, evolution, paleoanthropology, comparative anatomy, physics. When are people going to get their heads wrapped around this? The amount of glyphosate on your food is pushing heavy metals deep into your tissues. All right, this video is long enough. Comment down below for part two. No, I don't want to see part two. And also, I'm sick and f tired of these reels where the jump cuts are so fast and it's so intense that you cannot possibly follow along. You see, with my videos, there are jump cuts, a lot of them, but I don't have a ton of stuff being popped up on the screen and all these different transitions distracting me. And just looking here, you cannot slow these videos down on TikTok, at least on the computer. I'm sick and tired of that. I understand trying to be dopaminergic and captivating, but that was superfluous. Wow. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel and please comment your thoughts below and also once again subscribe to the patreon if you haven't already and buy my book contraindicated if you haven't already and if you are attempting to further ameliorate inflammation and you have already adopted a carnivorous diet bereft of any plant material or carbohydrates to speak of i would recommend referring to the link on the screen below the cerule link but before you do that i would recommend learning about those products and what they are and luckily for you i have a video that is designed to explain just that which will be in the upper right corner of the screen or if not it'll be linked in the description below called Cerule products, which is a complete elucidation video of who should be taking those products, why you should take it, when you should take it, what they even are, and what they do. So, refer to that video as well as the interview that I conducted and hosted between myself and Professor Bart K, which goes further in detail as to what each product does, the science behind all of those products, as well as the business of Cerule, the company itself. So, please refer to those videos. And also, email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any other questions about anything, or if you'd like to learn how to receive those products for free because who in their right mind would not want that? So, with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that knows absolutely nothing about human nutrition science, biology, biochemistry, etc., etc., etc. So, see you then.